Hi, thank you for watching Dig Into China. I'm Dong Xiong. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Sharing a significant piece of news from China that directly concerns every Chinese individual. Surprisingly, this news hasn't received the attention it deserves in the Chinese public discourse, and the expected reactions haven't followed. Reuters has covered this story with the headline, China's embrace of GMO crops gains momentum with new import planting approvals. On January 18, China approved additional varieties of genetically modified soybeans and corn for import and production while expanding their planting areas nationwide, as part of a drive to improve food security and reduce imports. The Agriculture Ministry approved the domestic production of six more varieties of genetically modified corn, two of soybeans and one of cotton, and another two of gene added the soybeans, a notice on the ministry's website said. The planting zones for most of the varieties were expanded from ecologically suitable areas to the whole country, according to the notice. Previously, some corn varieties were restricted to the northern or southern producing areas. For imports, the ministry approved the gene-modified insect and herbicide-resistant soybean variety DBN8002, developed by Beijing Dabei Non Technology Group Corporation, which had been licensed for planting in Argentina since 2022. China also approved a herbicide-tolerant corn variety. The new approvals extended for five years effective from January 2, 2024. With Chinese firms now allowed to develop and sell GM seeds, it is likely that Beijing will be a lot more forthcoming with import approvals, making GM seeds more attractive and creating a significant advantage for Chinese seeds companies overseas. In December, China issued licenses for a first batch of 26 companies to breed and sell GM corn and soybean seeds domestically after years of pilot testing. For now, these crops have yet to enter the industrialization phase as it still needs to go through variety validation, production, operation, and other processes, which involves government licenses. Market penetration of gene-modified crops could reach 85% in three to five years once the industry is fully commercialized GMO developer Beijing Dabei Nong Technology said in a filling last month. China is pushing for higher domestic crops yields this year to ensure food security and wants to reduce its reliance on soybean and grain imports, now at more than 100 million tons a year. Upon coming across this news, I'm curious about everyone's impressions. While the average viewer might not find Chinese agriculture issues particularly interesting, this news is worth paying attention to. It holds significance, especially for the Chinese audience, as it directly affects the future lives of each and every Chinese individual. I'd like to share five perspectives on this matter. Firstly, this marks the first public acknowledgement by the Chinese government that China has engaged in large-scale cultivation of genetically modified crops. Particularly noteworthy is the statement towards the end of the report, where the person in charge of Beijing Dabei Nong Technology Group mentions that the penetration rate of genetically modified crops is expected to reach 85% in the next three to five years. One can imagine the rapid and formidable shift as Chinese agriculture undergoes complete genetic modification practically overnight. This change is exceptionally significant. Secondly, in justifying the rapid and extensive promotion of genetically modified crops, the Ministry of Agriculture refers to a quote from Xi Jinping, the proclaimed motive is to safeguard food security. Consequently, the Ministry of Agriculture, under the pretext of ensuring food security, announces to the Chinese people the widespread adoption of GM crops. This evidently implies approval from Xi Jinping, indicating that the substantial promotion of GM crops has commenced under his endorsement or specific guidance. This GM initiative is a noteworthy policy breakthrough framed within the context of ensuring food security. 
In the third point, it's worth noting that China has consistently held the position of being the largest importer of genetically modified products. Despite the reluctance of Chinese public discourse and the official media of the Communist Party to acknowledge this fact, it's widely known among many ordinary Chinese citizens. This awareness stems from the predominant use of imported GM soybeans and corns in China, particularly in livestock feed. A significant portion of these imported soybeans and corns is GM. Additionally, oil seed products including cooking oil also largely comprise genetically modified components. Therefore, given the existing usage of genetically modified products in China, the extensive promotion of such products doesn't come as a surprise to many Chinese individuals. Fourthly, the open announcement of China's widespread promotion of GM seeds and agriculture products production raises concerns and warrants attention. China has a historical deficiency in effective oversight within agriculture technology, leading to an information gap. Contrasting this, in the United States where genetically modified organisms are prevalent, domestic support is not unanimous. In the US, if a product is genetically modified, it must be labeled, allowing consumers to make informed choices. Consequently, there is a growing preference in the US market for non-GM natural products, even at a higher price. This shift in consumer behavior signifies the U.S. commitment to providing transparent information and effective oversight for GM products. Human rights organizations, for example, actively monitor the potential health impacts of GMOs from genetic and pathological perspectives. However, in China, the situation takes a different turn. Anything backed by the authorities is considered unquestionable. Recall the past incidents of contaminated milk powder such as the San Lu formula and other harmful products. Many infants suffered health issues including swollen heads after consuming these hazardous products. Yet, consumers were unable to voice their concerns as victims attempting to raise the issues in the media could result in imprisonment. Now, considering the genetically modified the products. If they are developed by international companies, there is global oversight. However, if locally promoted in China and the local scientists introduce GM products without sufficient supervision, criticism becomes impossible. The potential health risks in such a scenario are quite alarming. GMOs themselves may not be inherently dangerous, but maintaining an open and transparent societal oversight is crucial to minimizing negative impacts. Without international assistance in monitoring, if China handles the oversight of genetically modified products similarly to how they manage the San Lu milk powder incident, it poses significant risks to the safety of the Chinese people. I'm aware that certain individuals claiming to be scientists in China exhibit a complete disregard for ethical standards in their scientific experiments. For example, they may engage in creating genetically edited babies without ethical considerations. When it comes to agriculture products, it is technically feasible to simply focus on increasing yields or improving agricultural efficiency. However, the difficulty lies in ensuring that these advancements do not bring about excessive negative safety risks. The question arises, who will oversee the regulation of these GM products? This is a concern for every Chinese citizen because once officially endorsed, the general public often finds it challenging to express their opinions or address their concerns. In the past, the topic of GMO in China was a significant and a contentious social issue. The discussions surrounding GMOs became deeply entangled with the notions of patriotism, with extreme views labeling those supporting GMOs as unpatriotic. However, today, the widespread announcement of the promotion of GMOs has surprisingly led to relatively calm discourse in Chinese public opinion. This development raises concerns and suggests to some extent an element of official control or suppression. Chinese sentiments are 
are known to be highly sensitive, and many individuals would likely pay attention to such matters. Nevertheless, on social media platforms, there appears to be a noticeable absence of public attention to this issue. It seems from the outset that authorities are shaping the narrative and steering the direction of public discourse. During Xi Jinping's 10-year leadership, the issue of GMO has consistently sparked intense debates within Chinese society. Ordinary citizens often oversimplify the discussion in two opposing factions, assigning labels based on one's stance. Those against GMOs are often linked with supporting traditional Chinese medicine, and politically they might be characterized as ardent supporters of the Chinese Communist Party. Conversely, those in favor of GMOs might be perceived as opposed to traditional Chinese medicine, potentially earning them the label of rebel. This general categorization illustrates the significant and the polarized nature of public discourse on GMOs in China. The CCP has repeatedly emphasized to the Chinese public that they exercise stringent control over GMO, assuring a cautious approach. However, with the sudden and complete relaxation of these controls, one might question whether the CCP is untroubled by potential public debates and controversies. Given the considerable skepticism surrounding GMOs, in reality, not only in China but also in Europe, there persists a resistance to the acceptance of genetically modified organisms. So why did Xi Jinping suddenly decide to open up to genetically modified organisms overnight? To be candid, this decision is a consequence of Xi Jinping's recent fixation on security and his dedication to fostering internal economic circulation in China. His emphasis on ensuring the stability of power led to this major policy shift. You can discern his strategic approach first. The announcement in the press conference followed by the control of public opinion. It's a tactic of saying, create, cease the debate. Whether you are for or against GMOs, let's put an end to the argument. Starting now, everyone is in favor of GMOs. Through the forceful implementation of this policy, Xi Jinping has rapidly transformed the China into a GMO powerhouse overnight. This is a highly typical example of Xi Jinping's governing style. In the first decade, Xi Jinping permitted a public debate on GMOs due to specific considerations. At that time, opposing GMOs was often linked to opposition against the United States, carrying particular connotations in societal discussions. However, there has been an overnight shift in this stance, likely influenced by Xi Jinping's recent emphasis on security and specific needs. Within Xi Jinping's thinking framework, he aims to find a quick path to ensure food security. What is the fastest way to achieve this? According to his perspective, widespread promotion of GMOs in China is the quickest route. Consequently, the idea is that henceforth, Chinese people can secure their food without relying on foreign sources, ensuring food security. Xi Jinping seems less concerned about whether the Chinese population will adapt to GM food or how many are willing to accept it. In his view, once he decides it is settled, he determines what people consume. Hence, with the Ministry of Agriculture's announcement and an initial calm response to Chinese social media, it seems that Xi Jinping is confident in his leadership. He holds the belief that he has the freedom to make decisions in China, especially regarding the promotion of GMOs. The subdued reaction from the Chinese public to the GMO promotion is seen by Xi Jinping as a validation of his authority and a control of the situation. Sharing this news is an invitation for international communities to take notice, and the hope is for open discussions within Chinese public discourse regarding the safety oversight of genetically modified products. It's essential for public opinion to engage in conversations on these issues as it directly impacts individual safety. The call is against blindly adhering to political directives merely to fulfill Xi Jinping's 
power ambitions, where individuals are dictated to what to consume. The lives of the Chinese people should not be subject to such simplistic political compliance. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and a subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here. I'll see you again shortly. Until then, be well.